Hi, and welcome back to PDA Dad UK. In this episode, I'm gonna be looking at the myth that exists that girls can't be autistic. So as I say, welcome back to PDA Dad UK. Before I go on any further, can you go hit like, hit subscribe, ring the bell, you'll always know when new content's coming up. You'll also be helping me smash that mark of 10,000 subscribers. It would be a huge thing for me, so please go do it. Huge favor, thank you. As I say in this episode, what I'm gonna be looking at is the myth that exists that girls can't be autistic. Now this is something that seems to come up and rear its head every now and again, and it's something that's come up with some conversations I've had recently with people who've been taking their kids for diagnosis, being seen by professionals. Now, when I say professionals, I can mean people in education, so people like, you know, head teachers, GPs, uh, any professional that's involved with the diagnosis process at some point. And it's something that seems to come up. Well, she's a girl, she can't be autistic. It's a, a boy's only condition. And this is a myth that's really come from re early understandings of autism. So we know now, of course girls can be autistic, of course that can happen. I can tell you now, my daughter's autistic, my wife's autistic, females in my life are autistic. But there's still this perception out there that really does exist that is that girls can't be autistic. Now as I say, this goes back to early time, early, our early understanding of autism if you like. When autism was first being identified, when it was first out there as something that was an actual thing, it was strongly hinted that, well, strongly believed that it was purely a male condition. In the last episode, you remember, I talked about the puzzle piece. And part of the puzzle piece and the reason that autistic people dislike it so much is the early adoption from Autism Speaks of using that blue puzzle piece. The reason it was blue is because it was just believed to be a male only condition. It was a boy's condition. It only affected boys. Girls weren't affected. As research and time has gone on and more is understood, it's now you know, widely understood and accepted that of course girls can be autistic. But there's still this myth that pervades, if you like, that it really is still only a male only condition. And that is not the case. And I wanted to look at this and explain why this isn't the case and explain why it's so damaging that it's often still used. The big problem is that girls don't fit the model. So there is a model for autism. When you go through a, an autism diagnosis, there's, there's markers, there's tick boxes, if you like, that have to be checked that say, this is what qualifies you to be autistic. Uh, when I did my course, on, I, I did a course online for understanding autism. It was the, one of the worst courses I've ever done because I disagreed with so much of it because it was so still so based on past beliefs. It really hadn't been updated to fit what the current understandings of autism are and how it works, or neurodivergence in general, to be honest. It really was frustrating to be a part of, and most of my answers were the written answer of what was expected, and then I'd give a little essay afterwards of why this is no longer correct. And this was one of them, and it was this thing that it's generally something that affects boys. Now this triggers through to diagnosis. When you look at the diagnosis statistics, now they vary depending on what you're looking at and where you're, where you're looking at it, if you like. The, the ratio of boys to girls who are diagnosed as being autistic is about four to one. So basically four times as many boys are being diagnosed as autistic to every girl. So it's, it's ridiculous that that's, that is a statistic that's out there. Now, as, as time's gone on, you know, it's difficult because pinpointing the exact figure for today is, is just so hard. That's generally the accepted sort of statistic that's out there. There are indicators that it could be as low as three to one now. So basically for every girl, there's two boys extra that are being diagnosed. It's still a big skew in what should really be a 50-50 split, but it's, it's something that exists. And it's down to this fitting the model. Because the understanding of autism is so much based on early understandings and this, this belief that was there that it's a male only condition, it means that a lot of the markers and the tick boxes that are used to identify if someone is autistic or is not autistic are based on the male understanding of autism. And the thing is that autism presents so differently in females. And that's really where it comes down to. The, the way a, a girl will present their autistic traits is going to be different to how a boy does. Because, you know, th this is life, isn't it? We're all different. And we fit into some stereotypes. We don't fit into other stereotypes. To do this, we kind of have to talk in some generalizations. And I understand that there are, you know, boys, there are girls, there's, you know, everything in between. 
what I'm getting at is that generally there are presentations that are different. Now, girls tend to mask really effectively. Now, you know I've spoken a lot about masking on this channel. It's one of my big beliefs that the more we understand masking, the better life's going to be for neurodivergent people out there because if we understand that somebody's being put in a position where they're forced to mask, even if they're not aware they're doing it, it's causing ongoing issues. Now, this comes into play with the diagnosis side of things in a couple of levels. One, on actually obtaining the diagnosis, but two, on the long-term effects of a lack of diagnosis. But really what it comes down to is that boys will present generally, will present differently to how a girl will present their autistic traits. Because of masking, girls will often appear to be much more functional in social situations. Now, I hate the word functional, but it's, it's sort of the only way I can think to describe it. But basically, girls tend to mask more effectively than boys and more often than boys. Now, again, that's not saying that boys don't mask. I can give you many, many examples of boys that have masked, males that have masked, males that do mask, but there does seem to be a higher proportion of females that mask. And so this presents itself hugely in schools. So when you're going to school and you're saying, I think there's an issue, I think my, my daughter may be autistic. Well, they're, they're functioning fine at school. It's not a problem. So it must be down to parenting. And then we go into parent blame and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to harp on too much about it because we've covered it in other videos. If you want to check out more about masking, please do go check them out. And I'll put the links in the description for how to do that. But realistically, the fact that someone's masking means that they're repressing their natural autistic traits. And there can be coping mechanisms and ways that they are regulating so that the anxieties that are so often associated with autism aren't dealt with in the right way. What I mean by this is acts of stimming is a really good example. When someone's masking, they may stop themselves from stimming. That means they're not self-regulating. Stimming is something, if you want to understand more about it, again, I'll put a link in the description. I've done videos on stimming. But the, re the reality is that 99% of stims aren't harmful to anyone. They just are different from what we would expect uh, a person to do. When we, you know, we look at a neurotypical world, I guess, and you know, if someone's rocking, it can feel, well, why are they doing that? But for that person, it's perfectly natural. It doesn't cause any harm, so why are we interfering with it? The problem I'm asking is that, particularly for girls, there, there's a social awareness probably that's bigger. They understand, I need to fit in, and so they will force themselves to do so. So things like stimming get repressed. So where someone might be self-regulating and controlling their anxiety through stimming, that's being stopped. Now this leads to a whole host of potential issues that follow on. Because an anxiety is not being dealt with, it's being repressed, it's got to come out at some point. It's got to start displaying. And certainly there's a big link between autism, undiagnosed in childhood, and conditions and mental health issues that can really happen down the track. So for someone who's repressing these things, it comes out, it can come out as PTSD, it can come out as bipolar disorder. When my daughter was first diagnosed, a doctor actually took us aside and was saying it's really important to, you know, focus on this stuff because there's a strong link between undiagnosed autism in girls and bipolar disorder later in life. Now my wife is bipolar, she's also autistic and she wasn't diagnosed as autistic. So it's very likely that there's a link between the fact that she's bipolar now and the autism that was present from the beginning that wasn't diagnosed or understood. Now there's a lot of question marks around that. Is it that bipolar is being misdiagnosed when actually it's autism? I don't have the answers for that. That's something that I may tackle in a future video at least raising the question and looking at the, the differences there. But the important thing is there's this, this is strong link between undiagnosed autism, especially in girls, and later mental health issues in life. So that can be depression, as I say, PTSD, emotionally unstable personality disorder, or UPD, or borderline personality disorder, as it's known over the rest of the world. For some reason, the UK has a different title for it. But all these things can lead on from the fact that there is a core issue of someone is autistic, and because it hasn't been supported in the right way, and I want to make that key point, this is about supporting people with who they are. This isn't about saying there's a problem or something wrong because they're autistic. That's not it at all. But if we understand someone has uh, you know, traits associated with autism, that they are autistic, if we understand that somebody has anxieties and we can help them to manage that and support it and, and work through it in a healthy way, it's only going to help them in the long run. It's going to help support them down the track. I think that's a really important thing to you know make the point of this isn't about finding cures or, or stopping or, or, or wiping out autism or anything like that this is actually about understanding autism 
understanding that it's just a different perspective of the world, supporting people in that so that they can live better, more fruitful, self-fulfilling, happy lives. And that's what I want for my daughter. That's what I want for my wife. You know, I just want people to be happy and, and comfortable in the skin that they're in. Because of the fact that girls mask so much more than boys, statistically, it means that it's so often passed over. Because they're functioning in school, appear to be functioning at school, it means that diagnosis is skipped over. Now, this question really came into my, my mind as something I needed to tackle at the moment because it's come up recently with people who've been dealing with doctors and with medical professionals in part of trying to get their kids diagnosed. I was talking to one lady who said that she'd been to the GP and the GP who literally said outright, they're can't be autistic, she's a girl. Now, that's just so wrong, and we know that's wrong, but it's because this incorrect myth still exists that it's a boy's condition and it's not. Another problem that's often raised as a result of this you know, disparity between uh, male diagnosis and female diagnosis is that girls are often misdiagnosed with other conditions. And again, it comes back to this thing, because the core issue isn't being supported, it leads to problems down the track. But often girls will be diagnosed with things like depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, as opposed to being autistic. Now, there's not necessarily a problem with those things being addressed because those things often do accompany the autism diagnosis. For my daughter, she presents with some depressive personality traits. There are times that she's very low. Thankfully, because we have the understanding that she is an autistic person, we can address that and understand that actually this low is a result of an underlying anxiety that's directly related to the fact that she's autistic. By managing that anxiety, understanding where it comes from, we're able to work with the depression. Now, there are other things that come along with that. As, as you'll know, very often people who are diagnosed as being autistic will have what they call comorbid diagnosis. It's a horrible word. Really, the idea is that they are other diagnoses that are associated with being autistic. So often you'll find that people are autistic with an ADHD profile, with a PDA profile, they might have sensory processing disorder, they may have a, a range of other conditions, high, you know, hypermobility is, is very strongly linked. All that sort of stuff comes in because it, it also comes back to this core idea that, that, that autism's at the center, if you like. But because these things present, now anxiety and autism are so closely linked, and I've talked about it many times. My very first video I ever did on this channel was about the link between autism and anxiety and understanding that. But because the anxiety is there, if someone's just being, if you're just tackling the, the anxiety, we're not tackling the root cause of it. We're not supporting the root cause. Now I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that it's about supporting the person through what they're experiencing and helping them to manage that. As a neurotypical person, I've had to do it with certain things in my life. You know, when I've had to deal with difficulties in my childhood and bullying and stuff like that, I've had to resolve it. I've had to come to a point where I've, I've resolved it. That doesn't change the fact that that stuff happened, but I had to work through managing it in my own head and how I related to others as a result. It's more challenging probably, especially for kids. Again, I'm talking kids in general. The idea of processing that kind of stuff, it, it's a little beyond where most kids would be at. But if I'm able to support my daughter with her anxiety, understanding that the root cause is actually based on the fact that she's autistic and that these anxieties are related to that, once I can tackle those difficulties and things like sensory processing, my daughter is, has sensory processing disorder, being able to put her in an environment where she feels comfortable, the clothes that she likes, the bedding she likes, helps us manage that anxiety. Another one that's often misdiagnosed in that it probably is there, but it really needs to relate back to is ADHD is often what is diagnosed in girls. However, it could be that that's a co-diagnosis with autism. It could also be that it's just simply that the girl's autistic. And so the way that they are displaying their traits appears to be an ADHD profile. Again, it's a misunderstanding of the fact that there is differences between how a male will present their autism and how a female will present their autism. The biggest issue that comes all, through all this is that we end up with this question that sort of comes up, which is what's wrong then? And I, I, that in itself presents issues. There's not necessarily something wrong. There's something causing the difficulties that are being faced. For my daughter, I've talked about it, you know, we've, we've recently realized that she has PMDD. If you want to understand more about that, it's to do with menstrual cycles and stuff, but go check out, I did a video on it. 
But that causes more issues, a hormonal imbalance, and it make, magnifies the, the difficulties of you know, the premenstrual cycle so much more for her. And there are ways that we've been able to deal with that and support that, understanding that when it's coming up, that's what we do. Likewise, with my daughter's anxieties, looking for the signs and knowing that she's autistic, knowing that she's going to present in certain ways, knowing that I can see certain things happening that allow me to go, hey, we're, we're heading for a meltdown, we're heading for... A point where she's not going to be able to cope any longer knowing i can change that environment do simple things to assist that it helps a lot with you know avoiding those situations where a meltdown occurs it's a really important thing to be able to do by misdiagnosing we are putting people through an unnecessary amount of stress they're bottling it more and more coming back to that masking but it means it's going to come out in later life in other ways and there are so many more diagnosis of you know forms of depression forms of mental health issues all this stuff comes out and it's often because this stuff's just been repressed when you when you look at people who were you know suffering ptsd after wars and stuff and it wasn't recognized back then they were forced to suffer this stuff alone go through it and you know it, it came out in so many really destructive and, and negative ways now that there's an understanding of ptsd it's able to be helped it's able to be supported you can't change what a person's experienced but you can help support them through managing it and processing it so that they do so in a better way for themselves if you like so that they, they are happier they are more fulfilled people who are living a happier better life as a result being able to support these things early on makes such a difference to down the track to the point that now ptsd is for people in the army they'll often go through a process of being treated for PTSD even before they've displayed any signs because if they've seen the things that they've seen there's an understanding that you have to be able to process it in a way that the mind can do so in a healthier way so that it doesn't lead to problems down the track if we understand autism early we're able to understand and you know prevent the difficulties and challenges that may come down the path the other thing that it can really lead to and this is something that really plays to my heart is that often autistic girls will be bullied because they're seen as different from those around them and yet they don't have anything that they can sort of re relay back to they don't have anything they say well i'm sorry i'm autistic this is just how i deal with things and i think understanding comes with that well, you know i've found it so many times where we've been confronted with a behavior that challenges and i've had to explain to her you know i'm sorry my, my daughter is autistic she has a pda profile she struggles with this stuff sometimes uh, please do understand 99% of the time people are oh well, absolutely and they'll, they'll be really understanding trouble is in the schoolyard the trouble is that in you know the rest of the way if you don't have something that you can really lay that back to how can you then do it and so it leads to things like bullying which again leads to more mental health issues down the track as I said before I, you know I suffered from bullying as a kid uh, I was really bullied and you know i still deal with the fallout from that to this day for my daughter i don't want her to ever have to experience that thankfully she's in a school where most of the other students have a form of neurodivergence themselves so there's a better understanding but i see it in the rest of life she's she's quite isolated as a result she feels it she knows it she comments on it a lot that she feels this isolation she feels different how does she process that at least knowing that she's autistic it's like she, she'll say to me being autistic makes it really hard for me dad and I'm like, I, I do understand. And, you know, I, I can't say any more than that in a way. It's like, I can relay my stories. I struggle with bullying and stuff like that, but it sucks. But at least I can be there and, and connect with her on that level. I find it's really helpful. And she and I do have a very positive relationship now. It's one of those things that's come across as time's gone on. As my understanding's increased, she and I have become closer, partly because she recognises the effort I've gone to, to, to understand her and to try and support her in that. It's not changing her, it's not adjusting who she is. It's helping her to manage the, the difficulties that are there. And when she's wanting to be violent or aggressive, how can we process that differently and all that kind of stuff. And it just comes down to this thing of, yeah, this is, this is what you, you live with. You are autistic and the way you see the world is gonna be through your autistic eyes. It's gonna be through your autistic mind. Helping her to understand that and it actually helps to alleviate the anxiety in her because she understands she's autistic she can then go oh, i'm doing this because it's part of me being autistic and therefore you know there's an understanding it, it is less to blame herself for in a way and i think that's a really beautiful thing it's not always the case but it, it happens a lot
There are positives that come from that as well. My daughter is so accepting of other people and their differences. She doesn't see the world in, in the way that so many do, where everybody has a label or a, you know fits into a certain category. She's very accepting of anyone. Her best friend has two mums, and she doesn't even bat an eyelid to that. And good on her. You know, that, that's not something that should be an issue. She doesn't see the world through skin colour or... Uh, you know, gender or anything. She just sees people for people. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. And that's come because she's had to accept that she herself is different from most people out there in, 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 in those sort of ways. And it's really helped her to become a very accepting, warm, loving person. So that's really what I wanted to say. It's one of those things that just keeps coming up. And I think the more that we understand, the more research we do into uh, neurodivergence and, and how it affects people, the better we can be at supporting those people in the world. Girls can be autistic. And it's not a problem. <laughs> Boys can be autistic and it's not a problem. What's got to be understood is the differences. And the more, it really, it's down to the effect that it has on the individuals themselves. Saying to somebody that they can't be autistic because they're a girl is denying them the chance for support early on and is, you know, really setting them up for some bigger issues and bigger problems down the track. And that's wrong. And that needs to be addressed. I'd love to hear your experiences. If you're autistic, especially if you and you're a divergent in any form, and you've experienced this this gender divide, if you like, I'd love to hear about it. Please do put it in the comments. Likewise, if you're a parent uh, or a carer or somebody who's sort of come across these hurdles, having to deal with someone who simply refuses to accept the idea that females can be autistic, please do put it in the comments. I'd really like to hear from you. It could help with a future episode. Please do go hit like, hit subscribe, ring the bell. You'll always know when I've got new content. You'll help me hit that 10K mark and it will be a huge thing. I will see you again on the next episode. In the meantime, please do stay safe.